Welcome everybody to another episode of Latif's Inspired. Right, I'm going to be going through a fantastic series, which I hope you're watching, is the basic building blocks of the British Indian restaurant curry. So all the essentials that you need from the ginger and garlic, tomato puree, and today's is the base gravy. So I've got a few base gravies on the channel, go and have a look, and some of them, uh, the first one that I've done is the most authentic, it's actually I'm working in the kitchen and making it for the actual restaurant. Today is the way that I want you to cook it at home. So I've got my onions, tomatoes, and all my vegetables ready. If you, I just want to say, if you enjoy what I do, don't forget to press the like button, share the content, put on the comment section what you like. I love that interaction. And if you uh, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and press the bell icon and get the brand new videos straight to you. Now let's crack on with this amazing base gravy. So get your onions, just cut it very simple in quarters. This is gonna break away while it's simmering for a good hour, hour and a half. So the tomatoes, same again, cut it into quarters. Thank you. My glamorous assistant has given me a bowl because there's no space on the chopping board. love that fragrance of the tomatoes beautiful green peppers cut it in half de-seed them again quarters perfectly fine Base gravy is just like a vegetable soup, to be honest with you. So you get all those vegetables ready. Now, if you're cooking a curry, it will take you good one hour to get a lovely sauce. So when we do this base gravy in most British Indian restaurants, that one hour, two hour of cooking time is done. And then we're gonna cook every single curry within five minutes. And if you follow me and watch the episodes which will be coming, you're gonna see how simple it is. Just follow my tips and uh, tricks to get the best results. Now we're gonna cut the carrots. So top and tail. So we're gonna cook this and just soften it up and then we're gonna whiz it up in a little stick blender. smaller you cut it the better it is um, the quicker it is when you're cooking the base gravy now when you're making a big batch of base gravy obviously you're not going to finish that in one go so what you can do put it in little containers and stick it in the freezer and then you can use it again you can leave it in the freezer for a good month or two that's no problem whatsoever but if you enjoy curries then you probably cook one every day so it'll be it will probably finish it within about a couple of weeks. So there you go. Now let's make the base gravy. Right, all you amazing home chefs out there. Now I'm going to show you a little tip. So if you're using this whole garam masala spices, all you've got to do is just boil the water and add your garam masalas and let it simmer for a good 15, 20 minutes. And what that does is just releases all the flavor and all the aromatics. And then what you can do, you can discard it and just use that water into the base gravy. So I'm going to show you. So bismillah. So we're going to be using about eight clove and eight cardamom. Look at that. Very fragrant. So this is 
Bangladeshi bay leaf. So I'm using three bay leaf. Now, when you use the test pata, which is the Bangladeshi bay leaf, it's more fragrant, and it's got more sweet flavor, and um, it's better than the ones that you would get at the lo local supermarkets. So look for test pata. Three of these going in. Now, cinnamon sticks. This, again, is the cassia bark. Now, it's not as uh, sweet, but it's more pungent and more flavorful. And in Bangladesh, this is all we use. Once you've added the garam masala, give it a nice little mix. Now, put a lid on. It's on a high heat, 15 minutes, and let all, the, all those flavors and all those aromatics just extract out and that water absorb all that flavor. While this is heating up, let's make the base gravy. Now let's make the base gravy. So I've got my pot on, turn the gas, bismillah. So we're gonna use one cup of vegetable oil. You want something neutral, you don't want something powerful, like uh, mustard oil, you know, it, that would overpower the flavor. So make sure you've got something neutral, like a vegetable oil, sunflower oil, is perfectly fine. While the oil's heated up, we're gonna use four tablespoons of the ginger and garlic. Now, if you're wondering why this garlic ginger paste is green, is because it's got loads of ingredients. Coriander, green chilies, peppers, it's absolutely gorgeous. There's a link on the description box. Please go and check out this amazing ginger and garlic paste. Now, if you're wondering why is there so much oil, when you're gonna make this base gravy, you're gonna use so much water that that oil is just gonna float on the top when it separates, but it's not that much at all. So please don't skimp on the oil, I promise. So this will take about two to three minutes on a high heat. Basically, we just want the rawness of the ginger and garlic to sort of go, so you don't, when, when you're having a curry, if you can still smell the ginger and garlic, it kind of be off-putting. Now we're going to add some seasoning. So two teaspoons of salt. You don't want to add too much salt because when you're cooking the curries, you're going to cook, you're going to put a salt in all the time when you're cooking. So salt to taste. So two teaspoons for here is perfectly fine. When the base gravy is finished, it shouldn't be salty at all. Now, curry powder, British Indian restaurants, and a British thing, we use curry powder in all our cooking. So, to make this base gravy, and if you want that British taste, use curry powder. So, two te teaspoons. Ground coriander powder, two teaspoons. Ground cumin powder, half a teaspoon. You don't want too, ma too many spices, it can overpower the base gravy. Because every single curry, we're gonna uh, cook a fresh uh, curry. In Bengali, we call it bagar, or we're gonna khoshai the buna. So it's very important, so you don't wanna overpower with too much spices. Half a teaspoon of general garam masala, and half a teaspoon of chili powder. So just nice, enough flavors, but not overpowering at all. Give it a nice little mix. You want the spices to hit the oil and just cook it for seconds and then you can add a bit of water because you don't want the spice to, to be burnt. And spices can get damp when they've been sitting in those packets for a long time. So when you hit it in the oils, it just releases the natural liquids, natural oils from the spice, sorry. So a little bit of water, turn the heat up to a high and we're gonna cook this for a minute or two. Right, I put the spices in, a little bit of water, it's been about two minutes, now I'm adding four tablespoons of the tomato puree. Once again, this tomato puree has got loads of spices, and we put a link on the description box how to make this. Once you use this tomato puree, you're gonna see the difference in your curries. It's gonna go up a level, I promise. So four tablespoons of the Latisse inspired tomato puree. Wonderful. So 
So we're just burnering all the spices together. This is very important. After a few minutes, the spices and the tomato puree cooking away. Now we're gonna add all these amazing vegetables. Lovely, colorful, and very simple. Simple vegetables. Now it was on a low heat while I cooked the spices. Now I'm putting on a high flame. There you go. Give all this a nice little mix. Put a lid on and we'll come back to it shortly. We're going to add the water. Right, the vegetable has been cooking away for a few minutes. I just slightly boonering it up for to get that lovely flavor and now we're going to add some water so that's one so that's three liters of water now just give it a nice little mix go close the lid and let this cook for a good one hour one hour and a half so keep an eye on it it shouldn't stick to the bottom but just cook it on a medium gas and let all those vegetables just soften up and put the timer on so which we're going to do right check this out this is the garam masala it's been simmering away for a good half an hour since I've added the base gravy. I mean, look at the colors of this. This is so aromatic. The fragrance is just crazy how, how beautiful this is. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna add it to the base gravy, sieve it out and just pour it in. This is the game changer. If you do this method, you're gonna have the most fragrant aromatic curry ever. Right now, the base gravy has been cooking for a good 45 minutes, the onions, the peppers, the tomatoes, softening up wonderfully. And now we're going to add our garam masala water. Beautiful, there you go. This is a game changer. You're going to have to try this in order to get that aroma. There you go. been a good 45 minutes or so so we got, it's going to need another 45 minutes just to soften up wonderful put a lid on and then we'll come back to it in about 45 minutes to an hour the base gravy has been cooking away for a good one hour and a half and every 15-20 minutes I've been checking it up. So when the vegetable becomes really soft, that's when it sticks at the bottom. So you're going to have to be very careful. So at the beginning, even if you don't mess around with it for about a good 40 minutes to an hour, it'll be fine. But after then, you have to be very careful every 5-10 minutes, give it a stir. Let's have a look. Wow. Beautiful. Everything's nice and soft, exactly how I wanted it. There you go, look at that. Proper soft. There you go, everything's just breaking away. Wonderful. So turn the gas off, let it cool down slightly, and then we are going to whiz it up. Wonderful. Right, since we are at home setting, this is one of these home stick blenders. In the restaurant, I have a massive um, blender. It's like a bazooka. It's huge. So this, stick it in. Now let's whiz it up. Be very, very careful because you don't want it to um, spit at your face because it's so hot. You're going to have blisters. Bismillah. There we 
do that. Guys, I've been using the stick blender for a good five to 10 minutes. What I need to tell you is at home, to get that really fine puree, uh, if you have a nice blender, put it into a blender and whiz it up and get that sort of puree. Because in what, a lot of restaurants, what they do is after blitzing this, uh, put it through a sieve so it's really fine uh, texture. So right, so this is done. So what we're going to do now is put it onto a boil and just thin it out. So we're going to add some boiling water and a bit of cream and just cook it for a good 15-20 minutes. Let everything just come back to a natural uh, boiling point. Because when you put cream in, because of the cold of the cream and the hot of the base gravy, it, if you don't use it up on that day, it's going to go off. So that's a tip for you guys. So let's crack on. We're actually going for two pints. Because remember, you can always reduce it down. Now this is half a cup, which is 125 milliliters of single cream. This is going to give that richness and nice texture. Wonderful. There you go. So that's a little secret recipe for the, to get that British Indian restaurant style. And once you put a bit of cream in that base gravy and you taste those curries, it's gonna be wonderful. So let it come to a boil, give it a nice little mix. There, that consistency is ideal. So when you have a thin base gravy and when you simmer your curries down, it brings out all the flavors. If you have a thick base gravy, and you're cooking the curries, the curry, it's not gonna absorb all those spices and flavors. So a nice thin gravy, simmer it down. It might take a few more minutes longer, five more minutes, however, you're gonna taste the actual difference. All those flavors are gonna marry up together. Because if you understand the concept of a base gravy is when you're stewing a curry, and um, it takes obviously half an hour, 45 minutes to an hour, we've done this already. It took us half, one and a half hours to cook it down to how we want it. So this, when we add it to our curries, five minutes, eight, five to eight minutes, we'll have, we'll have British Indian restaurant curries at home. Put the lid on, and we'll come back to it when it's coming to a boiling point. When the base gravy comes to a nice boil, then it's ready. So there you go, beautiful. So turn the gas off. And now we'll let it cool down or you can start making curries with this base gravy boiling away. As in the restaurant, we always leave it on a slow gas so it's always just simmering. It just brings out a lot of flavor. I mean, the color, this is ideal. Exactly how I want it. The texture's perfect. There you go, it's not thick and it's not too thin, this is ideal. Now, let's make some wonderful base uh, gravy style curries. Now, if you've enjoyed this recipe, uh, it's very simple for you guys to do at home. You're gonna have restaurant quality dishes at home. And uh, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe, press the bell icon, like the video, appreciate it. And you're gonna appreciate when you're actually cooking these dishes. It's gonna be absolutely gorgeous, I promise. So see you soon for the next one.